In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Since the beginning of time, mankind has been curious about secret things, the unknown, the dark arts. But although the desire to know more lies deep within the soul of every human being, knowing more does not come without a price. It is that desire that gives place to the greatest discoveries and opens the door to the greatest deceptions. For those who would embark on the spiritual journey to know more, the path is full of danger. The cost of breaking through the barrier of the known into the unknown is high, even tragic. The incentive for those willing to take the risk to explore the mysteries of the kingdom of darkness is the desire for immortality, the promise of power, power to determine their own destiny, and control over those who would present a threat to that power. The clash and conflict for power the insatiable lust for more, and the utter, inexpressible evil disregard for human life has left a trail of bloodshed and plundering throughout history. The pain and chaos continues with the desensitization to danger and the glamorization of evil. The news has left us callous while Hollywood entertains us with horror until it becomes nothing unusual. Is there a supernatural power behind the craving for power? Is there a systematic and deliberate plot, a diabolical force behind the mayhem and pain? Is there a general reorientation and repackaging of darkness that presents it as normal and appealing? You look nothing like the devil. Oh, really? I suppose I could have gone this way. Ah! But it's so trick-or-treat. It's true! Could it be that this assault and injury against the human race is more than just a coincidence, an accident, a random act of violence, as we would wish to believe? Is it an alien force that threatens us, or does he dwell in the midst of us? Could it be that the God of this age has come to claim his own through an internal and external human takeover? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Who are these powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness who seem to be arranged in some sort of hierarchy or order that wage war against the inhabitants of Earth? 
Is there one who rules over this system? Is there a personification of power, a form that defines the forces that seek through seduction and allurement to persuade us? Is there an embodiment of evil that dwells in the midst of us who works to deceive us with his familiarity? Is he a myth, a legend, a lie, a fantasy, a cultural representation of darkness? Or is he real? According to George Barna in a poll taken just last year, 60% of non-Christian Americans believe that the devil, or Satan, is not a living being but a symbol of evil. 45% of Americans professing to be born-again Christians do not believe the devil is real. The Halloween capital of the world. And we've got some young people here who are willing to talk to us about their opinions about who's the devil. Um, how does he relate today? Is he real? Is he a figment of people's imagination? And we're just going to have a, a free discussion. We're going to let you in on it. So here goes. Okay, let's take some names here. Who wants to go first? How about you, sir? All right. What, what, what's your opinion of the devil? Your name, your opinion? What's, what's going on with you? Uh, well, my name is Nick, and uh, Devil, I don't believe I've ever met him. Okay. If I did, I don't think he'd reveal that to me. Yeah, so... So I don't know if he, he's real or not. Okay. Uh, you've never... Here come... she. Here she. Okay. How about you, Katie? Um, just from what I've learned in, like, as kids in high school. Oh, I've never been there. Uh, I did, um, you come a little closer. I guess, uh, the... Devil's like the antithesis of God, it's a fallen angel. Who's he to you? Have you got any opinion yourself? I haven't really thought about it. Okay. It's never been an issue in my life. How about you, Kristen? Um, I think the devil's very real. I think inside us we have God and the devil playing out the forces of good and evil. And, uh... Satanism is basically bringing out the devil inside of you. Uh, your shirt. Tell me about your jewelry, your shirt, how you dress. Why do um, you dress that way? Yeah, this is the symbol of that for me. The go ahead. The satanic symbol. I have it on a necklace too and an inverted cross. Uh, why do you wear it? Well, I mean, I, just, I feel really comfortable about coming out and showing people who I am and what my beliefs are. And, you know, I just feel that that's the way I want to express myself. So would you say the devil is a, 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 a real being? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I feel God and the devil are real, and you also have them inside of you as well, working through you. I, mean, I, I believe they're, they're real beings, as well as forces inside of person. So do you worship the devil? Uh, I participate in some of the satanic rituals, but mostly they're just bringing out the devil within you. They're not really getting down on your knees and worshiping like you do God for you. Have, have any of the rest of you ever had any of that kind of experience? Uh, yes, I have. All right, tell me about yourself. Um, when I was younger, probably your age, or maybe a little less, I used to participate in uh, ritualistic worships, worship, Satanism, and whatnot, usually based on the works of uh, Anton's name. But, uh, I think what I learned from it was it had the same fallacies that religion ever held. It, it was, uh, inconsequential to the human need to understand. Um, I think more than anything in there's just a lot more confusion inside people than anything else. So, so, do you believe that there is a devil, and if you do, how would you describe it? I would describe the devil as your best friend. I would say that he's the guy that will always be there when you need him. Given the disparity of opinion on the true nature and intention of this force, and the diversity of descriptions regarding his identity, it would be no wonder that there are differences of opinion regarding his very existence. Would it not appear that the tried and true strategy to divide and conquer has been executed brilliantly? After all, would it not be to his advantage to persuade those he is trying to deceive into denying his very existence and conceal his true identity under the guise of the familiar and acceptable? The more we see of him, the less we are shocked by him. So who is the devil? Is he real? If he is, who created him? Can his power be destroyed? If it can, how? When? Where? He has come to us using many names. Satan, Lucifer, the devil, Apollyon. 
Abaddon. Goliath. And he has just as many titles. The Accuser. The God of this world. The Temple. The Angel of Light. The Prince of the Power of the Air. The Evil One. The Prince of Darkness. The word devil comes from the Greek word diabolos, which means slanderer, or one who accuses another. The word Satan comes from the Greek word satanos, which means the adversary, one who lies in wait for another or sets himself in opposition to another. These names illustrate two aspects of the creature's true character and method of operation. Satan became God's adversary and the enemy of creation in the garden when he came to tempt mankind to believe false accusations and allegations about God. Who are you carrying all those bricks for anyway? God? Is that it? God? Well, I tell you, let me give you a little inside information about God. He sets the rules in opposition. It's the goof of all time. Look, but don't touch. It was curiosity that drew Eve to eat of the forbidden tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Disguised as a serpent, the accuser used Eve's innate innocence and ignorance of evil to entice her. Using her curiosity, he seduced her into disobeying God simply by planting a question in her mind. Is God good, or is he keeping something from you, something that will make you more like him? Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The devil is described in scripture as the accuser of the brethren. When he stands before God, he makes allegations and accusations against mankind. He admits that he walks on the earth to and fro. His primary objective is to separate God and man. He hopes that separation will be forever. According to Christian and Jewish faith, Satan was a created being made by God. He now operates as an angel of light. As a matter of fact, his name Lucifer means light. In his original beauty, he stood at the zenith of God's creatures. The book of Ezekiel gives a very poetic description of that beauty. You were the model of perfection, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz and emerald, chrysolite, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as the guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until wickedness was found in you. Lucifer was not satisfied. He wanted more. Ezekiel goes on to say that Lucifer became vain. His vanity corrupted his wisdom and his nature. He became filled with violence within and sinned. Lucifer convinced a third of the angels to join him in revolting against God. He desired to usurp God's authority and rule the universe himself. The prophet Isaiah wrote, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Though Lucifer failed in his attempt to rule the universe in God's place, he nevertheless continues to build his kingdom on earth in an attempt to thwart God's plan for mankind. Through lies, confusion, and division, the devil camouflages his evil intentions by clouding the reality of certain ideas, beliefs, concepts, customs, rituals, and religions, making them appealing and acceptable. He is a master strategist in creating illusions. He comes as a friend, a benefactor. Well, I think I first got involved with, it started with just kind of like a fascination with the occult and the mystery around it. Um, 
I think it, the real involvement started with uh, Ouija boards. Yeah, but when I got older and I started searching for answers to life's questions, I turned to the devil. I think I was just kind of searching maybe for the meaning of life or why I exist, you know. It was probably more like he found me because he saw me searching and looking for answers. Satan now comes as an angel of light, transforming, concealing his true identity. He does not come with a tail and horns and a pitchfork. Rather, he comes as intense fear or thrilling horror or a promise of power or position. He comes with gifts, with wealth, with promises of safety. He comes as the subtle suggestion within, enticing and alluring men into believing him, coming to him without resistance. Are you kidding? I have to give you my soul? After you've had your wishes, of course. But it's my soul! What's the big deal? Have you ever seen your soul? Do you even know what it is? Well, of course, it's the thing that, that, um... Has yours done anything for you so far? No, yeah. it's... It's like your appendix. You'll never even miss it. Hey, yeah, well, if it's so useless, then how come you want it so much? Jesus described him as a liar. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's a thief and a robber who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. His intention is clear and unchanging. He desires the ultimate annihilation of mankind. His web of evil ensnares the world and its unsuspecting inhabitants in an insidious and deliberate scheme. He has devised a strategy and set up a system of pain and destruction to operate in every sector of human endeavor and experience. Satan's strategy especially targets critical areas of human life and development, such as worship, communications, relationships, resources, systems, and functions. Worship is the ultimate indicator of love and power, and as such, is an integral part of Lucifer's motivation. Originally designed as the worship leader of heaven, Lucifer was created for worship, not to be worshipped. His desire to be the object of worship caused him to incite a revolution against God and the two-thirds of the angels who had remained loyal. Idolatry and demon worship can take many forms and have spawned countless religions, cults, and occult practices. Mankind's innate fear of the unknown and his natural desire for power have mingled to breed a strange assortment of beliefs and customs. Every culture in every age has created rituals to stave off evil or to curry favor. None seems to be without its own set of superstitions, supernatural phenomena, and spiritual expectations, all of which are in direct violation of the First and Second Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. In Leviticus 17, God made it clear to his people that if they were going to be his people and enter into the covenant of his protection, they could no longer offer their sacrifices to demons. History shows that not only were these commandments ignored, but people deliberately chose to delve even further into the kingdom of darkness. The book of Deuteronomy provides lists of practices forbidden by God. Plagued by disbelief and afflicted by the consequences of their choices, the Israelites failed to heed the strong warnings made by God throughout the Old Testament. Despite God's warning not to worship demons, they continued to choose to come under the influence of carved images, sticks, and stones they had designated as gods, not realizing that the power behind the object was a demon who worked the magic and gave them power. Let no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead, for all these things are an abomination to the Lord. Communication provides a vital lifeline in any culture. It links and connects. It provides a means of both expression and reception. It forms the basis of relationships and governments. It provides the basis for operation in every system and becomes one of the most often targeted areas of the prince of the power of the air. Communication as an expression of human feelings in music and the arts enjoys no exemption from the plots and plans of dark powers. 
as the original worship leader of heaven, the devil's use of music to influence human thought and behavior becomes natural. Nothing communicates emotion and passion more powerfully than music. As a medium of emotional expression, music becomes the demonstration of anything from anger to ecstasy, sweeping people into sometimes devastating consequences. It becomes clear that vanity and image are still exalted as everything. His decision to rebel against God was rooted in his self-deification. The elements of rebellion and vanity and lust permeate every expression that proceeds from him. As God has called us to be created in his image, Satan's efforts to recreate man in his become of paramount interest. Combining beautiful images with the power of music by a technology and the media, the prince of the power of the air manipulates the world with a seductive influence using sights and sounds. The devil creates a sensual, synthetic world of artificial reality that heightens discontent and creates a greater desire for the things he so wants to supply. Through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and the non-stop images of pleasure without consequences, power without responsibility, and prosperity without effort, the devil hopes to bankrupt the human race with a buy now, pay later philosophy. Eat, drink, and be merry becomes an empty pit of loneliness, depression, and despair. Satan creates a world so appealing, many find it difficult to resist. Though his intentions to pervert the truth and exalt the counterfeit have convinced some, others have found a more excellent way, the highway of holiness. The effect of repeated exposure to enticing images, coupled with the need to escape the growing feelings of emptiness, make a profound impact on the human spirit. Relationships with real people often suffer and end tragically under the pressure. When faith in human relationships fails, people often turn to alcohol, meaningless sexual encounters, and suicide. And that's just the way I, I lived all my life. But I was just surviving. And I was serving this master. And the master, the, the, the road is so broad and wide to hell. And, and the master is the master of deceit. And he had me deceived that I just had a problem with drugs, or with anger, or with other people in all the while he just had me enslaved to um, to him he was the master deceiver as is often the case in the desperate search for meaning and significance some are enticed into seeking a deeper revelation and relationship with spiritual beings originally created to be in a spiritual relationship with God makes turning to the spirit world for answers a natural response Though many seek God for comfort and redemption, others choose a more mysterious and forbidden path. Wanting the more immediate pleasures and promises that evil offers makes hedonism, paganism, witchcraft, and Satanism all popular alternative lifestyle choices. Accessing the spiritual world can take many avenues and can begin as easily as going to a movie or reading a book. The dangers of darkness, though not always readily apparent, are nonetheless real. Those who enter such relationships do so at great peril to their own souls. Some make a deliberate choice to follow the devil, professing their intentions openly. It wasn't uh, uncommon for people to be inducted by scarification at all. What's about scarification? Scarification. Uh, part of the group uh, would watch the head priest do the sacrificing, and the thing that made me freak out about the whole deal is when they actually did a human sacrificial. Yeah. And what they did is, if you guys don't mind me getting into detail, I could get a little bit of trouble for this too. Um, what what go, what went on is. They laid down a black silk sheet that had a pentagram painted on it, and they laid black candles around in each corner. And in order for a female to be joined in, or with the cult that I was in, 
for a woman to get involved into Satanism. What they did is they took a knife and carved a satanic pentagram, like what's on her shirt, into her chest and then drained the blood off of her chest into a glass. And they passed it around to each person. They'd have to drink out of the glass. So they'd have to drink this other person's blood. And then that girl was a member of the same family. Did you actually see a human being sacrificed? Yeah, and that's what scared the hell out of me. And that's why I decided to quit it. I'd like walk around and believe in that uh, satanic cult. There's been forces that actually threw me against walls. And I went to church one day to free myself from it. My arm, my arm literally busted open. Uh, I got a little bit of a scar to prove it. So great day. And my arms are gushing blood. I mean, I would not want to see anything like that happen to me and to our boyfriend. So I would suggest giving it a thing about it. I mean, it's nothing to mess around with this. Get in touch with the dark side of the world. And the dark side of the world is this, this, this what's going to mess you up anymore. I've seen demons before. And a lot of people think, well, demons ain't really all that real. But what I saw, I was laying down one night and I heard something rattling underneath this little bamboo bench that I had. And I looked underneath there. I just like, heard something like laugh with like a deep amount of roar. And it laughed and I heard something screaming across the floor. And the next day, I was looking at some breakfast and I saw a tail that was probably, probably like that fat around. It had no hair on it, it was all skin and veins. And I saw that and I was like, oh, well, that's just a snake. But then again, after that, I heard the same thing. Rattle like something like railing up against something. And I heard that little laugh. And that's when I realized that I opened up, the, opened up some doors that were not supposed to be there. Pulled in by the congenial, self-serving presentation of dark powers, they make their initial entrance through portals of light. The incentive to connect with darkness is enhanced by the thrill of horror or the internalization of power and the feelings of being in control. Casting spells and mixing potions to manipulate others makes the practice of witchcraft both fun and appealing. They actively seek out a relationship with Satan for assistance and guidance. And I wanted to have my own, you know, power and to go straight to the man they're worshipping anyway, Satan. Yeah, it, I guess it just started with um, like different chants and stuff. I just, I guess, I got kind of greedy, and I just started uh, commanding these spirits to do what I wanted them to do. And it's, it, it appeared to me like they were doing it, because um, um, I'd see my friends manifest all around me. Um, well, I was walking to work one day. I was supposed to fill in for my dad while he was at work, and I, I looked across the street, and. Uh, I looked through the window and he was in the store talking to this man and instantly I just felt fear just, just move through my body, just instant fear and I looked at his face and it was his body but his face was the face of this, this demon that had these short stubby horns and this kind of green leatherish face kind of went down and kind of pointed and it was looking right at me and, and I kind of went insane after I saw it and I think something got inside me because I kind of just completely lost control of my life. I felt like I was kind of just trapped inside. Like I, I, I knew what was kind of going on, but I was kind of helpless to do anything about it. It wasn't like they were telling me what to do, they were doing it through me. Um, it just felt like I didn't have any control anymore. I'd gone too far in this thing. And when it felt like I had lost control, that's when I got scared because before that, it felt like I was in control of the situation. And it, it started very innocently and then it progressed into the point where I didn't have control anymore. Satan had brought me to an all-time low and I felt like there was so much of him in my life and so little of me that almost it's like he almost brought me into a different spiritual realm at times. Mm -hmm. And where I would see uh, these little black dots floating around and I wasn't on drugs, I was completely sober. It's almost like he brought me into the spiritual realm to see what was going on or something. But there's all these black dots 
and instantly I knew those were demons. I didn't actually see the entire body of the demon, but I saw the dots and how they would fly from person to person and they'd attach themselves either on their shoulders or they, if they wouldn't attach themselves, they'd just visit the person and move on. Well, they looked about softball size. They all looked black. Uh, some of them, some of it looked like blacker than other ones, but um, they were all about softball size and um, it felt like I had power uh, like over them like I, um, like I could tell them to go to that person and focus the energies or whatever that um, on them and I could see this dot come and attach itself to the back of this person and it would stay there. Um, to the skeptic I'd probably tell them um, I think for, for a split second if anyone thought of the spiritual realm they'd have a completely different perception on life because the Bible even says the spiritual is more real than the physical and I know for a fact when I started doing this stuff um, and the, the demon would attach himself, I could smell the burning of flesh. When I made a conscious decision to give my life to Christ, the pastors would um, bind the spirit in me, uh, whatever spirit they were dealing with, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. And they'd either they'd pray in tongues or they'd say, be loosed in different things. And it felt like this thing was being literally ripped out of my soul. And it was extremely painful. At, uh, at times, um, I'd, a thing would take over my body and I'd roll around on the carpet and I'd burns, rug burns all over my face and arms and stuff and, and it was extremely painful. It is extremely painful. Others make choices unaware of the dangers of evil. Influenced by the moment, impulsivity, or persuaded by friends, they're swept into circumstances that close in on them. I was actually a, in a Christian home. I, I met a girl over there um, and I I uh, found out later that she was a witch. I guess after the first uh, year and a half, two years, uh, I got back to the States and that's when I started getting into Satan worship. Oh, we, uh, we danced, uh, it was a coven, and we uh, uh, danced as uh, usually a lot of nudity involved, uh, a lot of uh, satanic sex is involved with that, um, a lot of chanting. Well, we, we got a lot of power, levitation, uh, certain things that uh, was uh, manifested or uh, into us that, that we could levitate ourselves, we could fly around. Well, I went to another party and um, uh, they had, it was actually a drinking par party that I went to and um, they had a Ouija board there and um, they started asking questions that they shouldn't have been asking. They, they were asking questions about God. One guy asked the wrong question and he was throwing through a third story window. I'd say they are a fool not to think it's real. At first they'll be all kind to you. Oh, I'd hear boy, I'd, I'd hear voices all the time. I've seen many curses, uh, curses of uh, uh, headache, sickness. I've even seen curses of love using their locks of their hair um, uh, in different potions um, and um, uh, using words, casting spells. I felt good. I felt like I had uh, Control. I think I did cross over a line at one time. At one point, uh, I was the uh, outer guard of, of a coven. Um, this was uh, uh, just uh, uh, north of San Francisco, and uh, I was uh, um, the outer ring was actually the guard, and I was a part of the guard. And I knew exactly what they were doing on the inner circle. They were sacrificing a human being. Uh, this uh, this was in October. I, I'm aware that she was about 12 years old. I knew what they were doing. I, I, in fact, I didn't, um, I didn't do anything to stop it. That's what hurts me most. Mm -hmm. For a long time, I was hurting inside. I didn't know what was wrong. And, um, anyways, I, I've been I've been saved now for about a year and a half. And I, um, I was, I asked, uh, I heard people talking, and I, I just says, man, this. There's a power greater than what I'm into. Forgiving myself is, is the hardest part. I, I believe Jesus loves me. Seeking an escape from boredom or desiring to belong, many become part of the plot, never realizing themselves to be the prey. Although some people stumble into the devil's dark kingdom unknowingly, others are simply born into it. And when I grew up, they were kind of like my role models. So when I grew up, I wanted to be a drug dealer because the drug dealers always driving in nice cars, nice jewelry, the, all the girls and the money, and that's the kind of life I wanted to live. 
a lot of drug dealers, they uh, have parties, uh, Santeria. What they do is they come together and they use a Santeria for their protection. It's, it's witchcraft. It's uh, saints. It's demonic. Yeah, this is my saint here, which is the Indian. That was the main saint I used to have. His name is Caribe Hindu, which that's how I, the name I used to call when I wanted to call him to manifest in me. When I used to receive those demons, they used to come down pretty wild. The Indian was pretty wild. He would come in and, and he was wild. He wanted a drink. He wanted a party. I seen guys that uh, they were doing witchcraft. They had their own demons. And uh, they got shot 15 times and still walking. When they come to visit, when they come and they manifest themselves and whoever the Santero is, is wherever he's at, and they come to manifest themselves, they want to come and smoke a cigar or they want to come and drink to them in the manifestation of the person who has them. So you have to have certain things for them. If not, if they come in, they come down, and you don't have a cigar, they really get upset. Inside the person who they manifest themselves, uh, that person will be with a lot of anger, just breaking things. Uh, it can hurt the person who he's manifested on. They can hurt him. They can take his life. They can uh, give him pain. They can uh, take somebody else's life in the manifestation of that person. This guy here, this Indian, Caribe Hindu, was the guy that I used to receive. So he was the one that was protecting me in the meantime. And some want out. They've had enough. This 26-year-old dungeon master decided to burn over $7,000 worth of maps, manuals, and related Dungeons and Dragons instruction books and paraphernalia after two serious attempts at suicide. Encountering physical heart problems and constantly being stalked by voices in his head and demons in his house persuaded Mike to take a look at his life. Did you feel away from God this strange when you were playing this? Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, went to church the whole bit. Uh, didn't quite know the whole truth, but, you know, I was basically your good Christian kid brought up, you know, and go to church, go to Sunday school every Sunday. And playing this in addition to all At that. the same time, yeah. So what made you uh, decide to give it up? Uh, about two years ago, um, one of my friends uh, seen that... Uh, I was ready to hear about Jesus. I'd had enough, and uh, I had actually tried to commit suicide, but that attempt failed. And what happened was I got just uh, stopped, basically, by God, or one of God's messengers, and got stopped and could not commit suicide, and there was no explainable reason why my vehicle would not turn off the road when I yanked the steering wheel at 110 mile an hour. And uh, being a mechanic, I could come back home, and uh, the next morning threw it up on the rack and could not find a single thing wrong with my vehicle. So what was your concept of the devil at that time? Who is the devil? Uh, a lot of people think that he's just malicious and mean, and he's not. He'll, he, can be the, he, he can be one of the sweetest things you've ever known, but it's all a trick. It's a trick. And that's all it is. It's just a trick. It's one big... Uh, fast gauge, you could say. It's all just to set you up to make you fall even harder. David made a similar break with darkness and witchcraft after years of wild street fighting and drug dealing. Being internally controlled by a spirit guide only deluded him into thinking he was invincible. I have true joy in my life now. I have peace. I don't have to call upon these saints. I don't have to do all these sacrifices. Jesus was my sacrifice. So all I have to do is call upon him. And uh, when I find myself in trouble, I can pray. And Jesus always gives me the peace. He's always there with me. There is a better way. And the witchcraft is false to deceive. That's not the way. Jesus is the way. Who the sun yes. set free is free yes. indeed, yes. Father God. Yes. You don't have to be in captivity. Yes. You don't have to be in bondage. Because you yes. pay yes. Guarding and conserving the earth and its resources protects our future. Destroying the seed becomes an effective way to destroy the future of any culture, the human race. Our children carry hope in the human generation, ranging from the blatant and obvious to the socially acceptable. The assault on the children becomes one of the devil's most well-devised schemes. He undermines both parental authority and their attempts to protect them. He recreates human responses through psychological reconditioning, trauma, exposure to danger, neglect, deprivation, 
and family dysfunction. Although parental care and affection for their children would seem to be a natural and common bond among all peoples, the staggering number of reports of abuse and violence by parents toward children, either by design or dysfunction, seems to be growing out of control. Well, I work with children who are seriously emotionally disturbed. That would be um, under SED diagnosis. Um, that comes from the DSM-4, which would be um, examples maybe ADHD, depression, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, those sorts of things. I guess what I see is, what comes to mind is confusion. Um, they don't really know where to turn to, the parents or the kids. They're not able to relate to each other. They're feeling um, anxious quite often. I even see it in, in some parents. I've seen even um, break out and things in their hands and um, on their arms and, and that sort of stuff because they're so anxious they don't know what to do with their children. Um, I have run across some parents who really don't want to be parents. Have, um, I have some kids on my caseload who are um, abandoned. Um, it seems like it's getting worse. The cases are getting worse. The children are getting more violent. The internet. Oh my gosh. Most all my clients staffed are just, most of them kids have been perverted through the internet. The heathen nations of the Old Testament sacrificed their children to the demon god of Moloch and the Baals. The children of Israel also began to sacrifice their children to demons. The practice infuriated God. The shedding of innocent blood to invoke the favor and protection from demons became a common practice. Though the practice of child sacrifice still flourishes in the earth, few would accept the practice of placing their babies on the altars of gods and goddesses as socially acceptable. Modern technology, education, and legislation, however, have given our society permission to place those babies on the altar of stem cell research, personal convenience, and individual rights. The issue of human life has shifted from one of moral absolute to legal debate. Children who survive the womb continue to face the more subtle dangers that come through toys, games, TV programs, advertisements, video games, peer pressure, and books. Even parents who love their children and take responsibility for protecting them often become unwitting accomplices in the assault. Under the guise of popular children's literature, fun, fantasy, and learning to read, the devil has set a new string of traps. Teaching them spells, incantations, and witchcraft has become a multi-billion dollar business. Trificus Totalis. The principle is that if you learn certain words, you can have power. And the books, the Harry Potter series, are connected to websites that get you into arenas where there are experts at teaching you the spells, the legitimate spells. What the reader is being introduced into in Harry is that is, there is legitimacy in rituals and spells, which are a sort of another word, let's say, of repetitive prayers, as Jesus said in Matthew, that don't be like the Gentiles and the pagans that just repeat their prayers for what they want. All forms of life on earth are sustained in and through systems and functions. All systems, both naturally occurring and man-made, are based on laws and absolutes. Although they can and often do function under the stress of less than ideal conditions, life and its processes operate best in a state of order and equilibrium. Physics, mathematics, and justice all operate to maintain balance and alignment in relationships. Homeostasis and harmony promote health and safety. Optimum performance and quality of life are found when life processes are in harmony with the rules that govern that system. God is a God of order. He has set all things in their proper order and course to promote and protect life. The devil comes as a destroyer. He promotes confusion and is the source of chaos. Pain and hurt are the byproducts of this disruption. That dysfunction can manifest in the human body as disease or in society as rebellion. It comes to corrupt the flow of life and withhold those things necessary to its continuance. Disruption and breakdown of systems and functioning of those systems in individuals, families, and governments 
all bring imbalance and separation. The loss of balance takes away peace and promotes anger and anxiety. True to his nature, the devil delights in creating havoc in God's creation through illness, disease, depression, and failure. He promotes lies and discord within families, unleashing strife among people and war between nations. He perverts justice and tampers with the foundation stones of nature itself, influencing individuals to follow him. Why? What are the devil's intentions? Is it his destiny and final call to rule the world and gather the souls of men? The Bible gives strong indications that indeed it is. During Jesus' temptation in the wilderness just prior to the start of his ministry, the devil tempted Jesus to exchange his power and sonship for immediate rulership of the world. All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus was not persuaded by the offer and refused to take a shortcut around. Cross. Only the victory of the cross established by Jesus Christ stands between us and eternal damnation. The demonic forces aligned against mankind can be thwarted only as true believers in Christ enforce that victory. It was to them that Jesus imparted his authority to cast out demons and bind the forces of darkness. Despite the devil's power and influence, he is not omnipotent. Jesus continues to wage war against him through his church. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I give you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Satan has established an evil moral system to oppose and destroy all that God holds dear. The stakes are high. The eternal destiny of every soul on earth hangs in the balance. Though the devil has technically already been defeated, the contest continues. Knowing that the destiny of each individual is determined by that individual's choices, the devil sees plenty of prizes yet to be had. As that final hour approaches, the devil continues to mount his final assault against the throne of God, Armageddon. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then God will come down from heaven and devour him, and the devil will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where he will be tormented day and night, forever and ever.